Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about repeated games. Repeated games are a special family of uh, extensive form games. Um, they are uh, in one sense uh, simpler because uh, the, 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 the same simultaneous move game, we call it stage game, will be repeated over and over again. And so actually the game format is kind of simpler than many other extensive form games. Um, but on the other side, uh, the analysis can be a bit more involved because uh, the repetition can be for a very long period of time. Sometimes infinite uh, repetition is, is, is the case. And so it may make actually sort of picturing or visualizing the game tree uh, can be very, very difficult. Nevertheless, there are some key elements in the analysis that you can use, which makes actually uh, sort of studying repeated games uh, easy. All right, so we are not going to present a full description of repeated games or full analysis of repeated games, but nevertheless, I'm going to give you some key insights. Let's start with what we mean by uh, repeated game. But before, so this is what I'm going to do uh, next. But before I do that, so let me just say a few things about the, the motivation behind these games. So why do we really care about repeated games? Um, well, once you sort of see the definition, it will probably make more sense. But the idea is the following. A lot of strategic environments can actually happening, uh, you know, un under some repetition. For example, you go to the same uh, grocery store, you go to the same barber, you go to the same mechanic, or you go to the, uh, or you call the same handyman uh, whenever you need a repair in the house. So sort of. Uh, the reason is that you know this person, so there's there's some history you shared, so you trust this person, or this person has a sort of high reputation, and so you know that uh, what he is going to do in this strategic environment is actually favoring you, or it's not going to hurt you. And so th th there is this idea of building reputation, building trust. In a, so all, all these concepts require a long-term relationship. Uh, the static games are clearly not capturing this because the idea is the players just play the game once and for all. Um, the extensive form games, however, well, they may interact in different uh, periods. You know, one player, for example, chess, one player moves and then the other player moves. But the thing is, uh, for example, in the chess, uh, the, the, the game at the beginning is, is completely different than the game after say 15 or 20 rounds or periods right because at each move actually sort of transform this game to a, 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 a totally different uh, environment totally different set of actions however the, the the thing that we are aiming to capture in repeated games is that although you played this game say 50 times 100 times uh, the future of the game or the rest of the game is still the same, meaning you still take the same actions, right? I mean, when you call, when you take your car to a mechanic, well, it's the same problem. The oil must be changed. Um, you know, some parts will be changed or, you know, some parts of the car should be checked. But the thing is, should I trust this guy, whether he or she is delivering the quality or not? So, the, the street, or how much I should pay for the service? Did he really... Uh, do this service or provided this service or not. So the strategic environment is, you know, kind of the same unless you change the car every period. You see what I mean? So um, for that reason, we analyze uh, repeated games. And actually, repeated games are kind of the best way to study interaction between immediate gains and long-term incentives. All right. So for example, in the mechanic example, the mechanic may want to um, sort of cheat and and overcharge you, but the thing is, he knows that if he does this and if you realize this, you, the, the the mechanic is probably going to lose you as a customer, and so the immediate gains sometimes uh, overwhelm the long term incentives, um, but but sometimes the long term incentives overwhelm the or or sort of outweigh the immediate gains, and so that changes the strategic interaction every period those players are taking. All right, so what is a repeated game? A repeated game is played over discrete periods of time, first of all, all right? So it's, a, it's a, the same game is repeated again and again, 
and, and these periods are discrete, period one, period two, period three, etc. We normally start from period zero, but well, I mean, it really doesn't matter uh, the name, I mean, whether it starts from period one or period, period zero, uh, uh, that, that doesn't matter. But you know, uh, for those notations, I will assume that it starts from period zero. So small t is going to denote the name of the period or the number of the period. And the capital T is going to denote the total number of periods in this game. So T can be finite or infinite. Again, infinite is not a number, but so without loss of general, I'm sorry, with some abuse of notation, when we say T equals infinite, we actually mean that the game may continue forever. Well, we know this is not realistic. So what do we really mean by T being infinite? Well, actually it means uh, there is no foreseen end for this game for the players all right so when you play uh obviously i mean you'll see it is it is very important in terms of your long-term incentives whether this is the end game or whether uh you know you'll continue this this game for a few more periods or whether you're going to continue playing this period like 100 more periods so the remaining number of periods will probably affect your incentives today, all right? And so T being infinite, we actually, with this assumption, try to capture the environments where players do not think that the game is going to over uh, very soon. Actually, it will, it will keep continuing, all right? So it's, don't, don't take T equals infinite literal, but nevertheless, the, the, the game tree means uh, when t is equal to infinite, there is no end game, all right? Um, well, you may sort of start wondering how are we going to analyze those games when t is equal to infinite because we can't really use backward induction, right? What is the last subgame? Uh, well, th there's another trick to analyze those uh, uh, games. It's, it's going to come up later. Well, each period, the same static game, one-shot game or simultaneous move game will be played again and again. Uh, we usually call this static game as the stage game, all right? So that's, that's very, very important. What happens is that each period, players choose actions simultaneously and independently. So, I mean, you can, if you like, imagine uh, that the players actually play the following uh, the Prisoner's Dilemma game, so 2-2, two, two, uh, um, sorry, 0-3, zero, 0-3, three, zero, three, three, zero, and 1-1, one, one. all right? So in period 0, both player 1 and 2 simultaneously choose one of two actions, C or D, all right? And then, uh, you know, once this period is over, they learn their actions, and then the same game, meaning the same uh, the matrix game is going to be played in period two. They again choose their actions C and D, and then they learn their uh, actions or the payoffs, and then the game moves to the third period, fourth period, etc. So you see what I mean. Well, at every stage, uh, these actions, so for example, player one choose C, and then player two chooses C, for example. So C, C is just one action, which is possible in, you know, one period. And obviously, uh, as a result of this uh, stage uh, game uh, action profile, uh, each player is going to receive a payoff, right? Player one receives payoff two, player two receives payoff two, if this is the action profile in some period. Well, so we denote the stage game by a, a, a couple AU, where A is basically a profile, so it's a Cartesian product of set of available actions, A1, A2, up to AN, if N is the number of players. Here, for example, A is simple, right? Because A1 and A2, they both are the same set, C and D, because there are only two available actions. So A is the action profile. For example, this is an element of A, all right, C, C. There are, you know, three more elements of A, C, D, D, C, and D, D. So these are the only elements of A. And obviously, as I said, each player receives a payoff. So this is something like small a, all right? So this is the action profile in the stage game. And so therefore the utility of player i uh, 
in the action profile A, which is CC in fact. So in this case, it's two for both I equals one and two, meaning for both player one and two, the payoff is going to be two. Well, you may wonder why all of a sudden we start denoting uh, the stage game actions as a profile. Well, uh, you'll see the notation is going to be easier. Actually, you're gonna come up, it's gonna come up here. Well, so before going to this payoff, let me say one thing. So at every period, so for each T, what do the players observe? Well, the players perfectly observe the history up until period T minus one, all right? So that's important. So meaning if we played this game 99 times, in, now we are in period 100. Before we you know, make our moves, both player one and two will observe the entire history. And by which we mean, I mean, by, by history we mean they're gonna observe what action profile realized in period zero, in period one, in period two, all the way to period 99, all right? And don't forget, these are profiles like CC or CD or DC or DD. So remember, A, you know, A0, A1, A2 are all elements of capital A. So basically, as we play this game, we create a sequence of uh, action profile, all right? And then what is the payoff, the, the, the payoff in this game? Well, first of all, every time we play this game, we receive some payoff, right? If we, for example, play CC, we both are going to receive payoff of two. Well, if we play exactly the same action profile in the second period, we're gonna get another two and two, right? So what is that gonna happen? So what's gonna be my total payoff? Well, they're different, uh, uh, you know, I mean, sometimes players only care about their maximum payoff, right? We play this game 100 periods, maybe you're not going to collect all the payoffs, again, depending on the environment. If this is, for example, a firm, uh, they're competing with another firm. So these are probably a, a monthly profit. And so therefore, uh, the, the firm is going to add up all those profits, right? Um, or, but if this is some individual who cares only about the worst possible outcome or the best possible outcome, so the total payoff can be defined differently. But the general practice in repeated game is, as I mentioned in the firm example, the payoffs, the each stage or the period payoffs will be summed up. Um, so if, um, I'm sorry for my notation, so this should be T. So if the game uh, has T period, so this is the horizon of the game, all right? And if the sequence of action profile is A1, A0, A1, a2 all the way up to a capital T, all right? Well, then each player is receiving this payoff, you know, for each um, a period. So what happens is that the, the game payoff for this player under this sequence, all right? So this is why I just left it. So the, the payoff depends on the sequence of action profiles, all right? So previously in the game, uh, the payoffs were depending on the profile of actions or strategies, right? It was strategic environment. My payoff depends not only on my strategy or action, but also on my opponent's strategy. So here, uh, there's one additional thing. Uh, still, my payoff depends on my opponent's actions or strategies, but also depends on the history of this game, all right? So therefore, given a sequence, my payoff is a sum of my, you know, uh, per period payoffs. Well, you may say, what the heck is this delta to the power t? Well, this delta to the power t is a discount factor. Well, delta is a discount factor. Discount factor, this is how we call it, delta. Uh, and it's usually a number between zero and one. We assume it as a number, as being a number between zero and one. All right, so for example, in this very simple Prisoner's Dilemma game, if these guys play, um, say, a CC for 100 periods, all right? So, uh, so for 
A0, A1, all the way up to A100. And so for A, T is always C, C for every T from 0 to 100. If this is the case, well, then utility of any player uh, after this, um, um, uh, after this uh, sequence of action profiles is very simple, right? In period 0, this guy gets 2 times delta to the power 0, so it's just 2, plus... 2 times delta to the power 1, so it's 2 delta, which is less than 2, because delta is a number between 0 and 1, plus 2 delta cubed, plus 2 delta to the power 4, all the way up to where 2 delta to the power 100. So obviously, if delta is very small and very close to 0, delta to the 100 is going to be almost like 0, right? So um, that's how the payoff is calculated. Before I go to the sort of uh, next important result, let me say a few things about this discount factor. What is this, this, what is this discount factor? What are we really discounting? Well, here, in a dynamic environment, uh, we assume that for many players, it may be the case that uh, a payoff of 2 today and a payoff of 2 tomorrow, so let's say each period is just one day, may not be the same thing, all right? Why is that so? Well, because everybody loves to consume, you know, things, you know, uh, uh, today rather than postponing it to tomorrow or a few days later. So therefore, or I'll, I'll, I'll come in later. So if this is a firm, for example, they prefer the cash, the, 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 the profit today rather than uh, getting it later, a, a year later, a month later. So therefore, Again, it may not be the same. So the same payoff to today versus to tomorrow may not be the same thing. And so this delta is kind of uh, representing how much less you're going to value, uh, you know, the payoff of two that you receive tomorrow. All right. And so, for example, receiving payoff of two hundred periods later. Uh, well, I mean, you don't really care much about it because the payoff of two hundred periods later is going to uh, uh, translate into today's payoff as 2 times delta to the power 100, which again, if delta is very close to zero, means like very, very small number, all right? So for that reason, we say uh, as delta increases to 1, all right, uh, the player gets more patient. All right. So if, for example, delta is equal to zero, all right, it's, it's an, one extreme case. What does that mean? So, so all these delta, delta to the power, oh, by the way, this is cube, right? Uh, I'm sorry, it's a square. This is third, etc. cetera. Um, so sorry for the, that small mistake. So if delta is zero, for example, clearly all those terms are going to vanish. They're going to be zero. So that means... Even though this guy is going to play this game 100 periods, what he really cares is only and only what he's going to get today. So this is a completely impatient player. He doesn't really care about future. All he cares about today. So you may consider a static game as a repeated game, but the players are completely and perfectly impatient. Right? When delta is exactly equal to 1, another extreme, well, then you'll see the delta term is going to vanish. So it's going to be two always. It's like today's payoff is two, but tomorrow's payoff is not two times delta because delta is one. It's again two. So what does that mean? That means whether I receive this payoff today or tomorrow or 100 periods later, they all mean the same thing to me. It's like payoff of two. So therefore, this guy, we call these guys as like patient players. All right, so they are patient enough, as you said, perfectly patient in this case, very patient that, you know, whether they get this payoff at the end of uh, 99th period or 100th period doesn't really make any difference whether he gets it in period zero. 